Welcome back everyone to another tips and tricks observability lab session. You can see it on the screen. Today's topic is around SLIs, service level indicators and finding good thresholds because while Dynatrace does a pretty good job in observing and finding anomalies in your four golden signals, you still need to define good SLIs and SLOs on business critical endpoints and services. And I invited RJ because he built this dashboard and other dashboards that he's sharing today with the community. RJ, please fill us in why this dashboard is important, how you use it with our users and how everybody can use the same approach, the same dashboard to build and define better SNIs and SLOs. Awesome, thank you very much, Andy. So what I've done here is build a dashboard that helps visualize in real time what happens when you set certain thresholds and certain targets. Uh, I, I work in the field with uh, accounts and uh, adopting SRE is something that I've noticed a lot of customers are trying to get to, but a roadblock that I've noticed is the actual targets that they set for their SLI. So what I've done is visualized all the different possible aggregations for things like performance. Mm -hmm. uh, I also visualize availability. And in real time, we can adjust certain thresholds and targets and see how that would impact the overall SLO. Uh, this dashboard has become very important in my conversations when bringing up SLOs because uh, it's no longer a guessing game, but rather we're using the observability data, observability data that Dietrich provides to get meaningful uh, SLI thresholds. Uh, so certain things that we can do in the dashboard is uh, in real time use the aggr the aggregations that we're seeing here mm -hmm. for performance and come up with a threshold that is meaningful based on the observability data that we're seeing here so uh, we can see uh, different percentiles and maxes uh, regarding the aggregations and adjust accordingly uh, as we adjust the threshold, the tiles will adapt to see that new evaluation. Mm -hmm. uh, now, instead of just guessing what a threshold would be, uh, accounts on the, in the field are able to now deter, uh, utilize this dashboard to determine a more meaningful uh, SLI threshold. Cool. We can go. So, yes. No, very cool. And I also see that. Uh, by default, you have um, you know an overview, it seems, of multiple different uh, services that are part of an application. I can see you have added filters on the top. Um, I think it's also great for me with my background as a performance engineer to see the relevant percentile values that we typically use to figure out where uh, what's the real performance distribution. So I think this is really nicely done um, and, and truly helpful. And you know, humans, we are visual people. Uh, meaning immediately getting visual feedback on green, yellow, or red is super is super helpful. Uh, but yeah, please go on because I know uh, you typically have a certain way on how to use this dashboard and just want to educate us on how to use it ourselves. Yes, so there's two kind of uh, ways to use this dashboard. There's the more aggregate way of uh, uh, visualization where at a management zone or an application level, what are my aggregate values? We can go so far as to say, actually, I care about a very specific service that I am providing to my users, uh, focus on that one service, and then override the management zone to, the, to then see uh, the evaluation for just that specific service. So here we have the booking service, and every single one of these tiles is now filtered to that uh, service specifically. Cool. And then uh, maybe one, one quick question. I know you mentioned management zones. So a lot of existing customers, Dynatrace users uh, are using management zones, but obviously now as we move into Grail, we are looking into uh, using the concept of segments. Obviously it's a dashboard on Grail. That means you can also just filter on segments. Just wanted to po point this out, but uh, it's also really nice how you can easily interact with the table. You copy the booking service, put it on, uh, the variable and now the whole dashboard is just reflecting uh, the filter uh, that you set on the top. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, you bring up a good point. There are uh, we have the ability to then utilize the segment if 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 we're uh, if you need to do that. Uh, one other set of tiles that I'd like to point out is the Davis Auto baselining tiles. So uh, 
apart from just using the aggregate values here, we can use Davis to actually deter, help us determine a more meaningful SLI threshold. So now that we've uh, filtered into this service, we can see that a threshold of 800 milliseconds is quite high mm -hmm. based on the aggregations that we see. Uh, here, Davis is actually telling us a threshold of 191 is a more meaningful target for us to hit. So I will adjust that uh, the, the threshold to that value. Cool. And that, so that also, point, I think that also shows uh, how you're really leveraging here the power of some of the capabilities we have, whether it's the baselining, whether it's the forecasting, in this case, the baselining. So uh, what is the real baseline over the last you know, 24 hours, uh, seven days? And then you just take that value as a um, uh, as a default or like as a as a recommendation, and then you can play around with it. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. So this is one view that I like to show uh, the app app owners themselves. There is one additional view that I like to uh, walk through. Uh, this is a more executive overview. Mm -hmm. uh, certain organizations have a default target that they want their application teams to hit. So this view here gives us an aggregate view across all your applications. Uh, what would it mean to hit certain thresholds? So in real time, we can adjust our threshold and see what the evaluation would be like across uh, all our applications. Yeah, oh, that's also super powerful, especially, um, I think we talked about this when, uh, when, when people ask me about SLOs, what is a good strategy? I typically say, do you have uh, different categories of applications? Do you have a, um, a CEF 1, CEF 2, CEF 3, or some people call it a gold, silver, and bronze level of service. So in this case, you can say, hey, show me all of my gold level services, then set a threshold for that gold service and see how you're actually doing. Uh, I think that's also super powerful and a nice overview, as you said, uh, exactly, uh, as, as the dashboard name indicates, executive service is a low overview. Perfect. Exactly. So uh, like you mentioned, if you have a certain set of applications, we can filter on those applications and then mm -hmm. evaluate uh, just the SLO for those set of applications. Cool. So that means uh, you show me how on an individual service you can leverage the suggestion from the baselining, then you play around with it on a service, you can get an overview. Now, this is all dashboards now, it's just visual indications. In Dynatrace, we also have uh, the ability to really create an SLO, a service level objective, where you then get the error budget, uh, where you get uh, an overview of how you're doing. How would then the process look like? So you have specified and you have found a good threshold. How would you then take this over into a real SLO? Sure. So uh, like we take, we can take it back to the booking service that we identified before. Uh, we found a more meaningful SLO using Davis. At this point, we can go to the, we can go to the SLO, SLO app, mm -hmm. input our meaningful target, uh, select our, our service. And at this point, uh, we can uh, set that uh, target. And now we have our SLO. So uh, no longer we are, no longer are we guessing at what a meaningful threshold is for us, but rather using the data that we have in those dashboards to help determine a threshold that we can actually, first of all, hit, as well as one that's uh, more appropriate for the kind of performance that our service provides. Yeah, perfect. Hey, uh, Ajay, thank you so much for walking us through those dashboards. Now, the last question is, where can people find those dashboards uh, that you've built? Sure. Uh, we do have uh, the data entries configuration as code samples repo, where I have uploaded a directory for dashboards. And in that directory, I have uh, uh, pushed this uh, set of these sets of dashboards. So we can utilize Monaco to simply deploy and run these dashboards without any additional uh, con needing to configure the code uh, so you can get started today really cool and folks uh, the link to this github repository is in the description of the video uh, if you have any questions if you have any feedback either leave them on the git repository or leave a comment on the video wherever you watch it and obviously, you uh, you know, you see our names. You can probably also figure out other ways to get a hold of us. It's always great to get feedback. 
And yeah, Ajay, thank you so much for sharing this. I know you've been doing this for many different customers. It's great that we as a community get together and share these best practices so that everybody can benefit uh, from, um, from the stuff that we've learned over the years. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.